welcome all you beautiful. You are so beautiful. It's such a wonderful thing to be able to connect with all of you in this fabulous new age media. My name is Annalise Parker. For those of you who do not know me, who have not worked with me before, I am a, um, I'm an elder in this Thrive community. And I say that with some pride because I am part of the leadership, but I also am part of a generation that's looking to try to make a difference and standing in being on the planet for many decades and knowing that that experience uh, can make a difference, is actually making a difference. So I'm welcoming you all to this event, which is our Thrive Sunday, this July 5th, 2020. I'm going to turn it over to my co-host so he can introduce Thank you, Annalise. Welcome again, friends. Um, my name is Joshua, and I'm, I'm going to be co-hosting with Annalise. I'm also one of the team members, and we're really honored to have you here. Um, yeah, and these, these times are real and alive, and so much is happening. And yeah, we're looking forward to diving in together. So thank you. Back to you, Annalise. Okay, I want to uh, do the land acknowledgement. And um, some of you know I cry. <laughs> uh, we are, I am in Alameda, I'm in Alameda, and that is Huchin territory. It is uh, the territory of the Chichendo speaking Ohlone people. And we acknowledge that we are visitors at best in this very, very sacred land, land that was stolen from these, from the Ohlone folks. So we want to acknowledge where we are and, and be in consciousness of that legacy. Also want to uh, welcome the folks who are standing in their elder group uh, today as part of our community and the parents. I'm doubting that we have children as part of our audience, but I know there are children out there in our world. So I am acknowledging those who are working with the younger generation because these days in this particular out of circumstances, it is not easy. And so you're doing uh, yeoman duty and we acknowledge you for it. Thank you very much for being a caretaker of the upcoming generation. Um, today, we our theme is the interdependence um, and the inner work of racial justice. Interdependence being There is a, I, I believe it's South African word, Ubuntu, which means I am because you are. And that's basically the theme of Thrive. We are building intentional community here. And Joshua, I'm gonna turn it over to you to um, tell them what that, what that means. Beautiful. Um, yeah, and let me make the technology note from the get-go. If, if you're um, if you're joining us, if you could keep your phone or your computer on mute, um, that would be greatly appreciated. So, um, for those of you who are part of the Thrive family, um, welcome again. It's so good to be with you, and especially for those of you who are joining Thrive for the first time. Um, Thrive is a community that's um, based in Oakland, California. Typically we gather in person um, on the first Sunday of every month. And we're a community that gathers at the intersections of meaning, 
belonging, the arts, and social change. Um, and the first Sunday of every month, we host um, an event like this with a different theme and a, a, a visiting guest speaker, um, practitioner. And then we always have artists. Um, some of y'all know we often also have the Full Thrive Choir, um, which is just the heart and soul of so much of what we do. Um, and guest artists, but in this new Zoom paradigm, um, we usually have individual members of the choir who join us as well. Um, so that's a little bit about who we are. We have four guiding principles, which um, I'm posting in the chat. Um, thriving lives, love and action, shared learning and practice, and systemic change. Um, and beloved community really is kind of the, the intersecting theme that brings us together and that will show up I think throughout um, everybody sharing today. So again, thank you. Um, please use the chat as we journey on today. There's gonna be some sharing. There will, um, we have two guest artists that will be performing. There will be one breakout. So just know that that will be coming too. Um, but please use the chat as you feel called to and then keep yourself muted um, except for when you're in the breakout. Thank you all so much. Annalise, back to you. Okay, our um, guest artists today, Madison Jamal and Kyle Lemuel. Our theme, as I mentioned earlier, is interdependence and the inner work of racial justice. We are so honored today to have Professor Rhonda B. McGee, the author of The Inner Work of Racial Justice with us. So we are going to be um, asking you to uh, leave any judgment that you might have had at the door and open yourself up to um, who and uh, what we are, are bringing your way. We are dependent on your presence and very thankful for it. So um, yeah, you want to go ahead, Joshua? Yeah, um, let's get started. You know, we, we, we are a community that is lifted up by music, by song, and we are so honored today to kick it off with Kyle Lemley. Um, Y'all, I want to sing Kyle's praises just a little bit. Um, Kyle um, has been just the animating force with the Thrive Choir, um, but beyond the Thrive Choir, he's also a musician personally, um, and I, most people, not all people know that he's like a full-time organizing, organizer, bringing change um, to our environmental movements, our envi environmental justice movements. Um, he's at, at the forefront of spiritual ecology. Um, he's a co-alchemist um, with Lead to Life. Um, I could sing his praises on and on. Many of the Thrive Choir songs have been written by Kyle himself. And today we're blessed to have him um, share some of his original music. Kyle, thank you all so for being here. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Annalise. Thanks, everybody. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. We good? Okay. Well, um, I'm just gonna dive right in. Um, it's so sweet to see, you know, all of you calling in from across the country. It's so, so deep to expand the boundaries of this Thrive community beyond Oakland to include the whole everywhere. Um, so blessings to everybody. Um, I'm giving you a little outdoor concert um, from my little camping trip. I'm, I'm calling in from uh, the North Sonoma coast. So apologies for the wind, but um, the wind is actually the singing element. It's the air that um, we get to alchemize and transmute in our bodies. So that's the element of song. So I'll be singing and harmonizing with the wind today here right on the bluff overlooking the ocean. I'm going to start um, with this one tune uh, that I wrote for my practice with Led to Life and it matches our theme of, of racial justice and healing. I wrote this for a ceremony we did last year in front of Oscar Grant Plaza Oakland City Hall where we were transforming guns into shovels so through this song just um, yeah just imagine um, just kind of in the vein of Dr. King the prophetic vision when violence has been decomposed so let's see let's hope this works with my little keyboard set up out here here we go turn on 
on my piano here. Hear me? Okay, here we go. Here we are at the end of all the murder. Here we are. The guns are melting down. Here we are. The prophecy has been answered. We decompose the artifacts of war Here we are Growing from the ashes, here we are The gun, the mushrooms cleaned it all, here we are Falling back to source, here we are A river changing course Laying down Laying down arms Standing tall Standing long With the trees Open up Open up Arms On this path we walk We are led to life On this path we walk We are led We're healing up the land for future beings. We're healing up. We're healing up our ancestry. We're healing up the land for future beings. We're healing up. Sing with me. Muted. We're healing up our ancestry. We're healing up the land for future beings we're healing up one more time we're healing up our ancestry we're healing up the land for future beings we're healing up here we are the people walk as people here we are the mountaintops remain as glory Sentence is sacred, life is left to live as we love to do. Oh, laying down, laying down on standing tall, standing long with the trees. Open up, open up. We are led to life on this path we walk We are led to life on this path we walk We are led to life Woo! Yes, Kyle Lemley in the house Led to life I'm hearing, I'm hearing the applause, even though I can't hear you, but I feel you. So thanks for, oh, I see the, the magic fingers. Magic okay. fingers. Thank, Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I got, I got time for another song, right? Here we go. So this one, this one, um, uh, I wrote, uh, during the pandemic, so it's brand new. Um, and uh, yeah, just so many lessons. Um, so many lessons, so I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just dive right in. Here we go. It's called New World. Spring blooms with 
about us Our patterns broken Release compulsions Now we make a choice When there's nothing left Nothing left When there's nothing left But love for the new house the prison's free i am empty and i i am full yes i have nothing left i have nothing left i have nothing left but love for the new got it i guess i got two more minutes um so once again i'm i'm really like it's a sad time when i can't have my 17 person thrive choir singing with me at thrive it's still um a bummer but we've been cooking up some magic spells uh even through this digital era so um, at the end of the call, we're going to share a bit more with y'all about what Thrive Choir has been up to. And we have a huge, exciting announcement. So excited to tell y'all about it later today. So the next one's a sing-along. And a lot of you Thrive folks know it. So please mute yourself so that there won't be any feedback or delay. But let's sing along from our own little um, parts of the world. 
Um, and thanks for your love in the chat. Uh, appreciate that. I'll read through it when I, I'm done performing, but thanks for the love. This one's called Alive. And um, just in a moment that we're in where so much, there's so much death around us, so much um, violence, <sighs> it's just important to celebrate the gift and privilege and joy of life. So let's uh, sing in our full um, gratitude um, for the preciousness of life um, as we sing together. Here we go. Uh, we'll just do it a couple times through because there's only a minute left. But here we go. One, two, three, and oh, I pray. Oh, I'm going to pick a different tune. Or here we go. Oh, I pray to wake up my life. Yes, I pray to wake up my life. Because every single day I am alive. I am alive. I am. Every single day I am alive. I am alive. Everybody, come on. Oh, I pray to wake up my life. Yes, I pray to wake up my life. Cause every single day I am alive. I am alive. I am every single day I am alive. I am alive. Woo! One more time. Oh, I pray to wake up my life. Yes, I pray to wake up my life Cause every single day I am alive I am alive I am Every single day I am alive I am alive Last time, here we go Every single day I'm alive. Love y'all. Thank you, Kyle Lemley. Kyle will be back at the end of um, our program to join Mazin. Annalise, over to you. Kyle, I butchered your name and I want to apologize. I only ever call you Kyle. I never get to the second part. So please accept my apology and thank you so Accepted. much. And I just want you to know that last one, I just was like, oh God, I cannot wait for us to be able to get together. Okay, uh, it is just such a great pleasure I have here to introduce our guest presenter today. Uh, professor Rhonda V. McGee is a professor of law at the University of San Francisco. She is somebody who has been at the intersections of anti-racism education and contemplative uh, movement for over 20 years. She is um, being, you might not be amazed at the fact that she is being sought after for her expertise at every level of society and is on the board of numerous uh, organizational development. She's working with the University of Massachusetts. She's working with the searcher, um, search inside yourself folks at Google. She's just doing amazing stuff. And you, I want you to know that I came across Professor McGee before we had decided that uh, she was somebody we wanted to work with us because I came across the book that she has written and is just out recently called um, The Inner Work of Racial Justice, which is something that I have um, myself been working towards. All of you who know me know that I am interested in racial healing and that I have been a meditator for many years. So I thought, oh, we have the answer here. And here's what I want to say is that we do indeed have some pretty remarkable tools in Professor McGee. And I am truly honored to be able to introduce her 
to you and to the Thrive community. We are working as best we can here to be a bridge community. And that means that we are unique in that we are seeking to address racism and its legacy head on. So we can all use the tools that Professor McGee has for us. And it is my very, very great pleasure to turn the program over to her. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, thank you so much, uh, dear Annalise, my new friend, um, and dear Joshua, Kyle, Sunshine, all of the folks behind Thrive. I want to say thank you to this existing community and to this brand new kind of community that's formed today, right? Because with my presence, this is my first time being with you all, and my guess is there are maybe a one or two other folks for whom this is the first time being in this group. So um, recognizing this unrepeatable moment where we have found ourselves together. And um, again, with the support of all of the work behind Thrive to enable this, right? These things don't just happen. So deep, deep respect and appreciation, gratitude for, again, all of the infrastructural support workers, right? Who's, without whose work this wouldn't have happened. Without whose sweat and energy this wouldn't have happened. Um, Joshua reached out to me months and months and months ago, actually, <laughs> before we knew exactly what would be on our plates at this moment. Um, and it took a bit for us to, to make time and make it happen, but we're here. So just wanna pause. Whew. And I wanna again, thank Kyle for the beautiful, enlivening, um, musical entree to this, glad path in a way to this. And I just wanna invite, um, ha, as we bring ourselves together around the kind of a metaphorical campfire, um, before we really settle in, um, I wanna invite y'all who are feeling something in your bodies as a result of that song to kind of allow yourself to feel some movement. So if you feel like stretching from where you are, if you're in a seated or lying position, please do. If you feel as I do, like standing up, I'm like scooting my chair back so I can stand up a little bit, please do. Take a minute. In other words, we're taking a minute to really feel ourselves as we come into this community of practice together. Feel the body, feel the aliveness in each of us as we come into this practice community together. For me, I often do a practice, I do a lot of movement related practice in addition to um, this kind of seated meditation for which mindfulness practices, I think, justly kind of primarily known. I do a lot of movement, a lot of practices based on uh, yoga, based on Qigong. So I really want to invite us, if you're feeling the energy that I, I know I felt some, some really powerful energy coming up uh, in response to Kyle's beautiful musical on-ramp here, really see if you can kind of gather that intentionally. Bring it in. Really feel the energy as a support for our gathering today maybe scooping down, really feeling the energy of that music, the energy of the earth we share in this moment. And then perhaps bringing the arms up and then in front, centering, 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 really, really inviting a kind of conscious practice for integrating, right? Ha, feeling that sense of that lively energy. I'm, I'm really moved uh, by our being together in this moment and being together in this way. Ha, with a community under the beautiful aspirational moniker of Thrive, uh, with the notion of beloved community as a kind of touchstone. And as you all know, so again, if you're willing and your body wants uh, this, to sit, please do kind of re, re gather ourselves back in a sense around the campfire. 
Um, you know, I often sit in circle with folks for these kinds of engagements if we can. And yeah, of course, we're in this moment where we're, we're encircling using the beautiful platform we call Zoom. So, um, and again, it's a little awkward to do that. And yet, can we feel the energy of the invitation to come together around a circle where we're all, where there's room for absolutely everybody? Where absolutely everybody here is completely welcome where there's no, you know, there's no hierarchy here, right? I am sort of privileged to be able to facilitate a little bit, but really this is um, my way of saying with humility, you know, I am here in service and solidarity in communion as a sister, if you will, in the work alongside with you in this moment. So if we could just take a moment to really take each other's faces in for those, I understand we can't all unmute visually right now and it's no right or wrong here, but if you can and you're willing, um, you know, being able to see your faces matters, makes a difference. So take a moment and, you know, again, we can't see everybody in one of these Zoom pages. We see these tiles. Go ahead and take a moment to page through and literally, if you're willing, allow yourself to be seen Allow your beautiful faces to be recognized and your eyes to be brought into connection with, with the eyes and beings of others as best we can, again, using Zoom. It's highly imperfect, but it's better than nothing, right? We get to see each other. Sometimes we get to hear each other. So really, again, as best you can, if you're willing, opening up your visuals, we are taking you in as best we can in this moment. And feel within yourself the sense of hmm, what brought you here. What is it that you come offering? Because everybody brings something. No accidents and absolutely everybody's original medicine is called for in this time. So sensing into your offering and as well sensing into what it is that you came here maybe with the hope or openness, at least, to receive. What are we feeling we're bringing? What are we feeling we're open to receiving? And trust that as you call that forth in consciousness, some, there's some way in which we can feel and sense that. And you might begin to chat a bit, right? Taking a word, taking a moment to just drop the word of what you are open to receiving, what you're bringing, what is, a word or two that for you in this moment captures something about, yeah, courageous hearts, your original medicine and what you're bringing, this beautiful offering that is your presence. If nothing else, your presence is a beautiful gift. What more? What are we open to receiving? Yes, healing, soft knees of openness, openness, becoming a better ancestor, imagination, interconnectedness. Who? I love it. So you'll be able to see each other's reflections in the chat as best we can to take a moment to really see what it is that's coming up, awakening, comfort, yes, kindness, pure potential, always here, always here, whether named or not, interdependence, absolutely, curiosity and learning. So I want to kind of invite us to uh, pause, sort of gently allow ourselves to kind of feel our way into the rhythm of we'll ease out of the chat and kind of invite ourselves turning back toward each other in this circle here. Pausing, pausing. We're going to make the most of the time we have here. We want this to be a time for us to share in learning together. And again, I've got, as you all, thank you so much. Uh, it's already been mentioned, this book that I wrote, uh, The Inner Work of Racial Justice, Healing Ourselves and Transforming Our Communities Through Mindfulness is the subtitle. The inner work suggests there's inner and outer. And of course, we know that that's just a metaphor, really. Whatever is inside is always already in relationship to the outside, if not fully coextensive with, right? So inner and outer are kind of illusory ideas, but I use that as a touchstone for my work intentionally. 
because so much of what we think about in terms of racial justice, yeah, is about changing that world out there. And goodness knows it needs, whew, we are witnessing in this moment in our lives so much of the painful injustices that intersect with racism, white supremacy, the legacies of centuries of um, mm, whew, systemic and organized suffering on the one hand, right? And systemic and organized privileging, pillaging on taking away. So taking, privileging, ah, lording over, there's so much. I'm just naming some things that come actually right in the door when we start talking about the legacies of white supremacy, racism, and the systems of oppression arrayed around race in the particular contexts that we've lived in. And they're very different. Each of our contexts around this, the things we've seen around this are gonna be very different. Some of us haven't literally physically in our own experience seen or experienced very much around race, racism or racial hierarchy or oppression, right? We may, again, depending on our own experience, have been somewhat sheltered, not actually confronted very much, may have read about some things, maybe learning more about some things today than we ever have. And some of us have been learning and knowing and physically bearing up as best we can around and beneath the structures of these oppressive forces for all of our lives. And, and everything in between, let's just imagine, is in this conversation, yeah? that there are these ranges of experiences, um, radically different pathways into this conversation. Ah, yes. And so to recognize that we are, you know, these soft bellied beings, carbon based, call ourselves human beings, because that's the term we've been given. And then we are given all these identity monikers. And race is just one way in which we have you know, being given to identify ourselves in the social realm, the realm of relative reality in which we all live. And I, I named this idea of a realm, right, to suggest that there are other realms, right, beyond the social, you might say. I mean, I'm just going to say hypothetically, I don't want to presume to know in a way that feels fixed, because I think, you know, if we are going to live our way out of the mess that we have inherited around race and racism and all the other isms and schisms, whether it be homophobia, othering to, uh, to our status, our immigration status, our disability, ability, uh, physical ability, um, characteristics, our age, our gender, our um, sex orientation and um, expression around that. And on and on and on, race intersects, of course, with all of these things and more, especially, again, in the context of the United States where I'm based and where my own lived experience gives me the most purchase on kind of having something to say about this. But actually, all of us have something to say. All of us have lived experience that I think we come together at moments like this to learn some, you know, we come together in moments like this in recognition that we know something, but we also don't know it all because we've only lived the life that we've lived. And something in those who are on this call, right? Something has called you to being with others in the work of social justice. And so inner work is a piece of it, but it's, for me, just a piece of this multidimensional way in which we might engage in the effort to transform the world. As a law professor, I have all kinds of thoughts about what justice means, but I'm going to refer to Martin Luther King, a touchstone, obviously a spiritual progenitor, a leader and teacher for folks in this community and beyond, for whom justice was often defined through the language of love, right? Justice as being love, um, power, correcting that which stands against love. Justice as power, correcting 
that which stands against love. Just that in and of itself, we can meditate on for some time, get a lot out of. Power, justice is power correcting, not power obliterating, not power humiliating, not power um, transposing, right? Just switching places with, just correcting that which is standing against love in service of love. Knowing our power and knowing that power is residing not only in systems out there, the justice system, et cetera. But for me, this is an invitation to think about the power we all have, inner power, power together, power with, as opposed to power over. To be together like this is to experience a certain kind of power, frankly. And so how we might be more mindfully engaged in interactions that have as an intention to amplify our power for positive action in the world is really one of the things that's driven my work for many, many years. Recognizing again that life, however, whatever it's characterized by for us in this moment or any other is a gift, okay? We don't know the length of it, any one of us. We are here now. And um, so for me, it's a very serious thing. W.E.B. Du Bois used to, always, used to say this as well. To live well is a serious thing. And I say it with a smile too, because it seriously requires some joyful awareness of the gift that just being here is, right? But from this place of the giftedness of being alive, having inherited just the ability to breathe together and to be able to sing together, right? Which costs nothing. From the place of inheriting some ability to be alive with the trees and the beautiful hummingbirds and whatever else we are fortunate to notice in these moments, to know that we are not given these moments of, of life forever. So we have to make some choices about how to live. So living with intentionality is an important, I think, aspect of what grounds me in this desire to talk about racial justice. Because if you have lived at all in America, you know um, racial injustice has been a feature of our society and it's led to a lot of unnecessary suffering. And so part of what it means for me to thrive is to be as mindful as I can about whatever I might do to minimize the suffering of others. And so for our time in this conversation, we are turning toward that suffering of others that's flowing out of racial Ooh, projects, I'll call them, the sociologist in me calls them projects, things that we do in our social world and we are led to do and we're complicit in and things that are organized and not organized, right? Systemic and implicit. All of the different ways that um, the legacies of racism and white supremacy show up in our world. If we are interested in minimizing suffering, we have to be interested in looking at the legacies of white supremacy and racism. We just can't avoid that. And we now know that in the post-George Floyd era, an era I'm calling the reckoning, others are centering on that term as well, right? Something is different about this moment. We're coming together on the July 4th, 5th weekend, and it's a different kind of July 4th weekend for many of us. And so this theme of interdependence, not just independence, not, uh, again, the theme of interdependence and in independence as it runs through the conversation of the force. So it's both personal and interpersonal, but also systemic and collective. What does it mean to live in interdependent thriving? What does it mean to see thriving as something we do together? Right? And so, um, wow. You know, time flies whenever we come together like this. So I have to be mindful of the fact that we do not have forever. And I want us to move into some kind of interactive conversation. Um, I will just cl close this piece by saying, in my work, I touch into five different sections. And my book is one place where I put it all together. The first section being grounding, right? Centering on practices that help us ground. There's anxiety in this time. There's fear. Always when, we, when we're confronted with the potential for much change and transformation, please know there's going to be fear, anxiety, uncertainty, 
a kind of a wish to not have to go through any change or transformation that's very predictable and kind of normal and human. So all of those difficult emotions, uh, emotional intelligence, social intelligence, the inner work of that grounding in some kind of capacity for resilience, for stamina in this work is I think really, really, really important. So this is one of the reasons why I've been bringing mindfulness and inner work in as an intentional grounding of support for this work. From grounding then, we are better able to see things that we haven't been able to see before. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Seeing some things we haven't been able to see before. Much a feature of this moment, we're seeing stuff. So from grounding, we're able to see things a little bit uh, more broadly, expand the aperture beyond our own experience, but how else are other people experiencing this time? Can we have patience? Can we listen to each other with love? Can we listen to each other whole? So many of our, this, the sense of despair, the sense of suffering right now is partly because we are wanting and needing to be heard and seen. Can we see each other? That notion of Ubuntu, I am because you are, and because you are, I am. Sawubana, a South African greeting. Rather than saying, hi, hello, who, where, you know, what's your job? What's your phone number? It's, I see you. So grounding, seeing, and from that place of seeing more rightly and more richly and fully, can we be with what we see? Not move away from, not try to pretty it over, not try to minimize, not deny, not bypass. Can we, can we spend some time hanging out with what we see? Are we able to deepen our ability to be with? Maybe even before we try to change, fix, make better. Y'all know what I'm talking about? That temptation to quickly do something, to perform that we're doing something, to almost have, you know, there's a term spiritual materialism where you're kind of grabbing and showing the thing, the accoutrement of spirituality, right? You got your things, you're showing that you're being spiritual. There's some racial justice materiality, right? So spiritual materiality is like, let's be careful that we're not investing too much in these signs and symbols that we're not, instead we wanna, can we feel this in our lives, in our hearts, in the way we are with each other? That's the spiritual reality and the sensuality, the essence that we wanna to touch. Racial justice can tempt us into a kind of materiality too, a kind of grabbing the books of racial justice and not the practices. So we don't wanna say don't read or don't do, like think and come together. We're saying, don't let that be the sign and symbol that keeps us from doing and being and liberating, right? So seeing and being leading us to do some things. Yeah, read, read, and then do. And then liberate ourselves all the way through, personally, interpersonally, systemic, and know that we're always already in doing all of that. Kyle, out there in the beautiful um, campgrounds where he is, that is personal, interpersonal, as he is here with us, from there, and he's disrupting right all the norms about how we have to come together. He's coming together from outside in the in that beautiful way in which he brought the in outside indoors. That's a, a kind of a, a kind of a beautiful way of making manifest that the inner, the interpersonal, and the collective systemic is always already intertwined all the time. So, um, ha, pausing to ask ourselves if we can take a moment. We're only gonna have, let's take about, can we take 10 minutes, Joshua, still? Do we have 10 minutes? Is that right? 10 minutes for small group reflections. And I wanna give you all really um, light guidance for how to be together in the, in the small groups. I'll say this, if you can give each person two minutes of uninterrupted reflection on just what's alive in you right now, right? Whatever it is that you feel called to speak to. Maybe something in reflection to what I've said, maybe something in reflection on what's coming up for you at this moment in your environment as we think about racial justice in these times and injustice in these times. So two minutes of uninterrupted sharing in groups of three, I think we're gonna break you up into. And then from there, if you can with mindfulness and heartfulness, listen each other into a kind and share each other into a crosstalk conversation. Again, it's gonna be quick. 
So be mining, pausing, sensing the pearls of wisdom that want to be offered for. And um, we'll just allow that to kind of uh, germinate and, and, and seed, again, reflections that'll continue after that sharing and after this call, right? Because we're, we're, we're never closing in this work. We're just coming together in this way for now. So yes, I'll repeat the instructions in the chat. Really, it's us alive in you right now. If I can. Thank you all.
All right, welcome in back. Rhonda, you are on mute still too. All right, so um, is everybody back pretty much? I think we're still coming, probably another okay. 15 Let's seconds. slowly, consciously come back, really sensing the energetics of the, trans, the transitions, you know, the things we often just move so quickly by, those nothing moments. We realize with these practices, there are no nothing moments. Everything matters. So just sensing into the quality of the heart, having you know, kind of been sitting is in the ways that you be beautifully did, um, allowing me the space to share. And then you had that opportunity to reflect with one or two others. And sense into the quality of the heart that is alive as you shift back into this large group dynamic, again, around the campfire, feeling the metaphorical circle of our concern, the expansion of that as we come back together. And so I want to invite maybe um, an opening up to any questions that folks have, um, any reflections. I'll say that one of the beautiful questions that came up in my chat was just about how to keep coming from love, even though we might know there's a lot of resentment, challenge, anger. I think just building up the capacity to love ourselves first is important because we know resentment and anger is in our lives. How do we work within in us? If we can work with it within us, we can expand our ability to create a space where other people can be their full range. Sometimes the people are angry, right? Some people are legitimately upset. We are legitimately upset sometimes. This practice isn't about kind of making it right, making it nice all the time. It's really about being real. But if you can be real with yourself, including letting everything be. And when you're angry, letting yourself be angry because anger is there to teach us something. It's not meant to be transformed away all of it, right? You can, there's an alchemy that can happen where anger can be transformed into a powerful energy, but yes, radical self-love, absolutely. So questions, reflections in the relatively short time that we have. I want to see if there's a way we can see hands up or Joshua, I'm inviting your support here. Did you see any questions coming in? Great. We got a few on the chat. Um, reflections and questions. Okay. What are your core practice for cultivating the inner work of racial justice is one question I see. Hmm. So core practices. I think again, I've already alluded to them. Self self-healing work. Radical self-love, really, really, really important. Can't be stated too much, amplified too much. And I just want to say, we often will think that's selfish. How can we do the work of racial justice if we're focusing on ourselves? To me, justice mm, ha is multidimensional. The wish to relieve our own suffering is the first approximation to justice in the world. So if we can begin to heal ourselves, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you all know, if y'all know my story, you know, I grew up in the South uh, with a grandmother who was born in 1906 in the period of the rest restoration of white supremacy all around us in North Carolina. A deep, like deeply internalized messaging about who belongs and who doesn't. That's what I was raised in. And I was raised around people who had, frankly, learned to, to survive. You have to kind of go along in a certain sense or not make too many waves. That was painful to see that in the lives of the people around me. But I also saw a certain kind of strength. I saw a grandmother who got up every day before dawn and prayed and centered herself and felt her own value and worth and off figured out what she had to offer to the world and then went out and did, you know, unglamorous work, cleaning houses for other people. But come, she came back able to connect with always a sense that there was more to her life than what other people thought, thought or made of who she was. And so I think that's a way of saying that for me, the practices are about healing ourselves, healing the, the, you know, the sense of separation that we carry all the time, the sense that we feel like displaced from home. There are real displacements, right? And we know this, that this world is beset with injustice and gentrification and, you know, cleansing, ethnic cleansing. 
migrations, all, all of that. There's a lot of injustice in our world. And yet this is one planet that has selected every human being who is here within the sound of my voice for life. You have been selected for by this planet, so you inherently belong. Absolutely everybody here does. And so for me, the practices that would allow me to stay connected with the sense that I belong are the foundational practices. And again, I wrote the book to describe a whole bunch more, but yeah, centering on the breath of life that I love, Kyle was like a manifestation of it, right? It's song, it's dance, I sing, I move, I meditate, I do art, I, I connect with others around you know, cooking and feeding each other. In other words, bringing that intentional love to everything we do is to me like the core practice for the inner work. And then you do the hard work of trying to change systems, whether it's at your workplace or in your communities, it's trying to hold people accountable for injustice around race and racism, stopping the racist jokes before they get going, right? I mean, so there are all these things that we do. And unfortunately, I have to wrap up because that's the nature of the tyrannies of time <laughs> and the beauty of time, right? Because we have other things we are given to do. So I wanna just pause because uh, what I'll say is, please keep the questions coming, put them in chat. I will save them and make sure that Joshua saves them so we can continue to infuse our work together as a community, perhaps Thrive can. I will continue to reflect on your questions. Um, you can connect with me through rondavmcgee.com or on the socials. You can find me very easily. I'm happy to stay in contact with all of you, any of you. I'd love to hear any reflections on my book or otherwise on this talk, on your journey, on your life. So um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Thrive Community. Thank all of you for being here in this work, in this time. No small effort here. Everything matters and there are no accidents. So thank you for taking the time to be here today. Thank you, Dr. McGee. Ron. Honors and blessings. Yes, Ron. Rhonda and mm -hmm. Dr. Because we know that that was hard earned. Those are hard earned, those titles. Well, but for me, it's a JD and a master's, not right. a PhD. Right? It's still. Oh, yes. Still. Okay. okay, Professor McGee. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for being here. Thank you for leading us. Thank you for sharing your magnificent information and wisdom. We are just so thankful. Um, and we give you the doctor, even if you don't have it. <laughs> so I believe now and we will ab absolutely folks those of you I see so many of you who um, I'm just so thankful to see I'm just so thankful so I just want you to know you know who you are you know who you are so thank you for coming all of you um, it's my great pleasure to introduce our next uh, guest, who is just this amazing musician and who is um, musically providing a soundtrack for our journey of waking up. Because that's what we're doing, all of us. Yeah, waking up. Um, he's sharing his purpose with the world and living with integrity, joy, and a whole lot of soul. When he isn't singing liberation songs, he's weaving harmony in teams as a culture, inclusion and collaboration consultant for visionary tech, corporations, business, and social movements. So he's got a whole lot going on. He's a talented, talented being. We are so thankful to have him with us. His name is Mazin Jamal. Thank you. Wow, you know, that intro, I just feel like there's like um, a in the background. I was like, yeah, I'm awesome. <laughs> so thank you, thank you. Um, hey, everyone. I'm just really grateful to be here. 
I don't really feel like there's too much I need to say in introduction because everything that I have to share with you all is just like perfectly fits, which is really exciting. So Rhonda, thank you for just like dropping the knowledge. Like that was amazing and, and I feel really grateful. So I'm gonna invite us all to do a practice together right now. And um, the practice that I believe um, will help integrate a lot of the amazing wisdom that Rhonda shared with us and um, helps me to integrate a lot of the deep work that I'm doing and I know we're all doing right now. We're all, we're all looking. Whether or not you wanna be looking, you gotta look right now. Your head is just looking, you know, we're just like all of our heads have been grabbed and, and pointed, so. Go ahead and get comfortable where you are. It'll be a little ngoni. And just feel your body. Feel this body, feel the weight of gravity on your body. Feel the weight of your arms hanging from your shoulder joints and let that heaviness pull from your arms, elbows into your wrists. Feeling the weight of the blood that is flowing through your palms. It's so heavy. This body has been through something in this life, huh? This is your friend, your body, your partner for life. So just, hi body, hello. Thank you for your resilience. And just notice if there's any place in your body that feels really good right now. And notice if there's anywhere that doesn't feel so good. And just see if you can be with all of it. If you can be with the pain and the pleasure that is in your body right now. Let all of that be energy. It's just energy that we are gonna use today for some cosmic racial justice magic. Your pain, your pleasure is all fair game to use. So I want you to just really drop your attention, your awareness into the earth. Let the earth be our ally right now. And I want you to invite in the ancestors of this body. Invite in the ancestors of your body and you are gonna use their every mistake and their every blessing and their every success is all a resource for you right now. That is all energy and it is all fair game to be used in this cosmic work of transforming our world. So every single one of your ancestors is coming in the room right now. And breathe deeply because it's gonna take a lot of space to hold all that. There's a lot of stuff there. It's a lot of ancestors. I know I have ancestors in my lineage in Sudan who were colonized and enslaved, and I have ancestors in my lineage who also had slaves. And that was their way of trying to claim power in a system that was not really set up for people to win. So I'm inviting all of that of my ancestors in this building. Feeling their hands at my back, feeling them say to me, all the places where I wasn't awake, you, my descendant, will you be awake? Take another deep breath. It's all good, y'all. All this energy is we can use it. If you feel it heavy, all good. Just take a deep breath. And I want you to now think about <sighs> feeling the back side of your body is where your ancestors are and feeling in front of you. Invite in all of your descendants that are to come. 
the future generations, whether they are descendants of your body or descendants of your heart, the children that your ideas and your love will nourish, that your hands will care for. Can you feel yourself as a conduit? Your whole lineage behind you and all of these future generations before you. What is the world you want to leave for these children? What does it look like? What's the most beautiful thing about it? I'm asking you to really let your imagination go wild right now because we need imagination. We need the imagination to envision a world that they deserve. Can you see yourself as a conduit to that world? Can you hold all of your blessings, all your privileges and your strengths and your skills? All of that is part of why you are who you are and what you have to give to this movement. It's all energy and it's all fair game to be used in this great alchemy of transforming our system and creating justice. So I want you to just take this sensation of being the conduit for all of the love, the mistakes, the lessons, all the blessings that your ancestors have, all of their wisdom and all of their darkness, all fair game. And I want you to hold this vision that you have for your ancestors, for your descendants, for the future generations. And just see ourselves as one point in this continuum. The situation took way longer than any one person's life to get here. So it might take more than just your life to go to that vision. But are you willing to be this step? Are you willing to be this point to play this part in this story? If the answer is yes, then take a nice big deep breath because that's where it all begins. We got to say yes. with a sigh. You can wiggle your fingers and toes and wiggle your head and your neck and your shoulders. And... <sighs> May we be together today as a point in a continuum with 
everything we've got. Everything we got. All of it. We need it all. So I'm going to share with you all a song that I just wrote today. Um, I actually have been writing it. Even like Rhonda would say some things. I was like, oh, I'm going to change this line. So this song has never been sung before, um, even by me. But it just feels like what needs to come out right now. Um, <laughs> and um, I'll say one thing, you know, uh, I spend, I've been spending a lot of time thinking about uh, the culture of the movement and how can I be a stand for a culture in our movement that really is uplifting the best of us. Um, and, and where, because there's a lot of ways in which we've been trained to be making each other wrong and all that stuff. And it hurts. It's, so that's what this song is about. I've been spending so much time looking at the fucked up things in my mind. Seems every evil thing that I find I see reflections of here inside how many laws have we changed but still things feel the same Structures outside rearranged, but these structures inside remain. What if the only real evil is fear, and the heart is the final frontier? We know how to structure things, that much is clear. And now the heart is the final frontier. Out here trying to change up things with my foe. But these insecurities ain't no joke. Times I walk my ass right off just to show I ain't one of them. No, I'm woke. Trying to be a good activist with my fam. Following instructions I read on Instagram. Catch me being mistaken, no, I'll be damned. Get my ass canceled if they catch me on the cam. Oh.
Cause these wounds are deeper than the sea And you were raised to be terrified of me And this pain of who we're told to be If it don't change, we never gonna be free Oh, these wounds are deeper than the sea and you were raised to be terrified of me And this pain of who it told to be If you don't change, we're never gonna be free How many laws we done changed But still things feel the same Structures outside rearrange, but these structures inside still remain. If the only real evil is fear, then the heart is the final frontier. Let's share some love. Woo! Yay! Amazing! Mazin, thank you. And Mazin, I'm going to invite you and Kyle to bring us home. Right on. Oh, wow. New song. It's exciting. There's actually yeah. another verse, but I didn't know it was enough. It was a long song, turns out. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of songs, um, we want to share with you all something that's really exciting. Uh, me and Kyle are two members of the Thrive Choir which is the choir that, you know, we have the, the honor of being the voice of, you know, the Thrive, you know, the musical voice of the Thrive um, community. And um, I'm just go ahead and share with y'all. Um, let's see here how we can do this. Yes. Are we going to share the, the video? Yeah. Anything you want to say before I do? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just say I know it's 5.30, y'all, but... Oh. We, we only request for five more minutes of your time because it's a really exciting announcement. So thanks for staying five minutes over. We promise not to go more than that. Um, but thanks for bearing with us and it'll be worth it. I trust, trust me. So go ahead, Matt. Hi there, we are the Hi there, we are the Thrive Choir, and this year we are planning to release our long-awaited debut EP of original songs. Now more than ever, our world needs music that illuminates the joy and the pain and the beauty of what it means to be alive in this time of cultural and systemic transformation. We are a choir of Black, African, Latinx, indigenous, Arab, white, Asian, and mixed descent singers. We are activists, mothers, healers, educators, organizers, and earth stewards. With your support, we're gonna raise the remaining $10,000 we need to finish recording and sharing this soulful musical medicine with you in the world. We know our community has been yearning to take this music home and share it with their loved ones. And we've gotten requests from radio stations and filmmakers and podcasts and nonprofit organizations, but we haven't had the recorded music to offer them. With an easily shareable record, we know our music will have the wings it needs to reach thousands and not millions of people who need to hear it. The Thrive Choir brings music to the movements for social and environmental justice. For us, we see meaningful songs not as a luxury, but as a necessary part of cultural transformation and healing. Five years ago, this choir was born with Thrive East Bay, 
part of the Global Thrive Network, which gathers people at the intersections of meaning, belonging, arts, and social change. And at the monthly Thrive Sunday events, we bring together the power of song, poetry, and speakers like elders Erica Huggins and Joanna Macy, as we work to create a world where all people and life flourish. As our musical message spread organically across Northern California, it wasn't too long before we were invited to offer soul-moving performances at conferences and festivals. We've led thousands of people in song in the streets at the Rise for Climate March and have opened for Bernie Sanders. Let me thank the Thrive Choir. Yeah! We've been featured on podcasts and have had the honor of recording with Mom Muse and harmonizing with Rising Appalachia and Climate Poetry. Now the time has come for us to share our original music. Our songs take inspiration from all of our ancestors and especially honor the radical power of African-American spiritual musical traditions. As a choir, we uplift and revere this tradition while creating music that is inspiring for all faiths, backgrounds, and cultures. Our music uplifts the sacred and elevates us in relationship with the natural world and each other. Thank you for tuning in to learn about us and our vision to release our debut EP. Every amount of support helps. Please donate today to pre-order our EP, to pay it forward, and to support local artists and change makers. Let your generosity flow as much as feels right and true for you, and we promise our gratitude will meet that energy in turn. By the way, we want to show our gratitude through a number of thank you gifts and perks we have offered below, such as vocal lessons and custom songs. Check them out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for helping making our dreams come true. Thank you all so much for taking awesome. a second to check out that video uh, that we just made. We're, we just are launching the, the choir campaign literally right now. Uh, so y'all are the first people to know that we're gonna be producing an album this summer and um, we need your help to do it. So we think, uh, please click the link in the chat. And we're, I have a goal for us just on this call, the 83 of us on this call, I think we can raise $2,500 right now to go towards this album. It's our first time we've ever recorded music. Um, and it's time for the world to share, to, 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 to listen to us, to take us home, to hear us on iTunes, hear us on Spotify. Um, so please, if you can, just click the link right now and, and go wild, be generous, let your love flow and support these, this incredible, diverse, beautiful choir. Um, and having that music travel all over the world. So yeah, click, click that link. And Mazin, you have anything to share while folks are, are clicking the link and let's see if we can raise that $2,500 together as a community. If we do raise $2,500 today, we will actually be 80% there because we sent a few of our, uh, to our base goal. So you all would really, really help because we, we um, just like, a few days ago told some of our like parents and stuff like hey can you all contribute before we launch and it's been going really well and so we 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 hope that you all can join um join us in in this feels like there's a lot of excitement to make this happen so it's really a blessing and um you will get the ep first if you um if you donate today yeah that's right twenty dollars can pre-order the ep and the five songs are so good. Um, they're really amazing. And they're all original music from us. Um, so $10,000 is our base goal, which will pay for 75% of the, the cost of production. Um, our, neck, our middle goal is 18,000, which will pay for 100% of the EP, plus um, um, a music video, which can travel all over the world. Um, and then, uh, 30,000 will help us fund a 10-song 10, a 10 full album um, and also help us pay for our Indiegogo costs. So thank you all so much for, for clicking that link and supporting us and, and believing in the power of our music. Um, and I'll turn it over to you, Joshua. Yeah, actually, Annalise is going to wrap us up as we thank everybody and say our goodbyes. 
And that's actually all we want to do. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Rhonda McGee. Thank you, um, Kyle, for singing to us. Thank you, Mazen. Thank you, choir, who I miss desperately and hope everyone will support. Thank you, Joshua. This has been an amazing Thrive Sunday. We uh, do these regularly.